According to Unreal Engine, the landscape tool is used to create immersive outdoor terrain pieces that are optimized to maintain playable frame rates across a multitude of different devices. I've already downloaded the textures and other assets that I'll be using in this tutorial. If you don't know how to do this, see my Getting Started in Unreal Engine tutorial. The link is in the description and the card above. In the content browser, I add a new folder for my landscape. In this folder, I add a new level folder, textures folder, and materials folder. To begin making a landscape in Unreal, you need to first open the landscape mode. This is located under the select mode menu. There are three tabs that can be used in landscape mode, manage, sculpt, and paint. The Manage tab allows you to create and modify landscapes. The Sculpt tab allows you to raise and lower the height of the landscape. The Paint tab allows you to add materials to the landscape. From the New Landscape option, you can quickly create a new landscape from scratch. In the Level Viewport, you will see a preview of the new landscape. You can add a material at this point, but we'll be doing this separately in this tutorial. You can also move, rotate, and scale the landscape just like any other actor in Unreal. Section size refers to the number of sections in each component. In this case, that would be 63. Sections per component refers to the number of sections within each component. This can be one by one or two by two. Number of components refers to the green squares. In this case, 64 components because we have an 8x8 grid. This defines the size of the landscape. Overall resolution is the resolution of the landscape, meaning how jagged or how smooth the landscape will be. Total components refers to the total number of components. I've provided a list of recommended landscape sizes for you in the description. Once you have all your values set, click on Create to create the new landscape. Save this level in your Levels folder. Notice that once you create the landscape, you're automatically taken to the Sculpt tab. The Sculpt tool enables you to raise and lower the height of the landscape height map in the shape of the currently selected brush and fall off. In the Layers panel, you now have a height map layer. Brush type allows you to define the shape of an area of the landscape. Brush fall off determines how hard or soft the brush will be and the definition of the landscape. The tool strength determines how much effect each brush stroke has. This is especially relevant for people using a pen tablet with pressure sensitivity. Brush size is the size of the brush, including the fall off. Brush fall off determines how hard or soft the brush will be. The clay brush gives you the option to sculpt more organic landscapes. Painting with the left mouse button will give you raised landscapes. Painting with shift left mouse button will give you a lowered landscape. You should change the brush settings as you sculpt to make the landscape more organic. Let's explore a less manual way of making a landscape. Make a new basic level 
and save it in your levels folder. To use the second method to make a landscape in Unreal, you'll need a height map. I've already made a tutorial showing you how to use NASA data to make your own height maps. There are also free and paid height maps available. I'll be using a free height map from Motion Forge Pictures. The link is in the description. Instead of creating a landscape from scratch, we have the option to import a height map file and use it for our landscape. Once you click on the Import from File button, you can open your height map. You'll now have the same options that you had previously. Make sure to check your resolution. It should match the recommended scale from Unreal. Again, the link to the documentation is in the description. I can see they're stretching along the outer edges if I use the default resolution. I'll import this map and change the resolution. For me, I'll be using a section size of 15 by 15. Sections per component will be one by one and number of components will be five by five. Then click on the import button. And then save this level. I've already downloaded textures from Crixel Bridge that I'll be using for this tutorial. Again, if you don't know how to do this, see my Getting Started in Unreal Engine tutorial. Link is in the description. We'll be using landscape specific materials for more control over the textures, which allows us to paint with layers. Under your landscape folder, open the material folder. Right click and add a material and rename it. Double click to open the new material. In the content browser, open your first set of textures you downloaded from Quixel. Select the textures and drag and drop them onto the material graph using your left mouse button. Select these three textures and under the details panel, change the sampler source to shared wrap so we can use multiple textures within the material. Right click and search for material attributes. Selecting make material attributes. This node allows you to define any of the standard material attributes found on the main material node, bundle them together, and pass them along through a single output. Connect the base color texture to the base color of the material's attribute. Connect the normal map to the normal of the material attribute. Connect the red channel of the mass to the ambient occlusion of the material attribute. Connect the green channel to the mask of the roughness of the material attribute. Adding texture coordinates will allow us to control the tiling of the textures. Right click and search for texture coordinate. This will allow us to use different UV channels for tiling. Press the M key and left click to add a multiply node. This allows us to change the tiling of the textures. Press one and left click to add a vector one node. This provides us with one vector, which is, will be the tiling. Right click on the vector one node and convert it to a parameter. 
This is what will allow us to change the tiling without changing the actual material nodes. Rename the node to Tiling. Connect the Texture Coordinate node to Pin A of the Multiply node. Connect the Tiling Parameter node to Pin B of the Multiply node. Connect the Multiply node to each of the UV pins of the textures. Apply and save the material. And save the project. Select the textures in the material attributes node and copy and paste them with control C and control V. Select the base color node in the content browser, open the second material and select the base color texture. In the material window, click on the use selected content icon. Repeat this process for the other textures. Apply and save the material. And save the project. Repeat this process for the third material. Connect the multiply node to each of the new textures. Apply and save the material. Save the project. Select the four nodes for each texture and use the C key to add a comment. Then change the name for each texture. Apply and save the material. We need to add a layer blend node so we can blend the multiple textures together. Right click and search for landscape layer blend. With it selected in the details panel, we need to add three layers, one for each material. Twirl open each index and rename the layer. Connect each of the material attributes to each pin of the landscape layer blend node. Deselect the nodes and in the details panel, activate use material attributes. So we can connect the landscape layer blend to the material. This will simplify the original material node. Connect the Landscape Layer Blend to the Material Attributes node. Apply and save the material. And save the project. Back on the landscape in the Content Browser, find your material. Right click on it to make a material instance. A material instance is used to change the appearance of a material without incurring an expensive recompilation of the material. Select the landscape in the outliner. Under the details panel, look for landscape material and open the material instance you just made.
Under the Paint tab of the Landscape mode, you will see the three layers just made. In order for Unreal to see the layers, click on the plus button, choose Weight Blended Layer, and save the layer. We can just use the default folder Unreal suggests. Now you can select a layer and begin to paint on the landscape. To change the tiling, open the Material Instance from the Content Browser. Double click it to open it and activate the tiling option. This is the parameter that we made with the blueprints. Now you can change the number to change the size of the tiling. Don't forget to save the material instance. You can now choose each of the layers and paint the materials on the landscape. I've already imported foliage and other items into this project from Quixel Megascans and the Unreal Marketplace. Again, if you don't know how to do this, see my Getting Started in Unreal Engine tutorial. Link is in the description. Open the foliage mode. For now, we'll leave the options at their defaults. Please note that the foliage mode only works if you already have a landscape in the level. Select a tree and drag and drop it into the mesh list. You'll know you have an asset selected by hovering over it and seeing a check mark. You will now see even more options for this tree. In paint mode, if you hold down the left mouse button, you can paint the foliage onto the landscape. The brush size controls the size of your brush which determines how much of the landscape you can cover at once. The paint density determines how dense the foliage will be when you paint. Erase density is how much density of the foliage is left behind when you erase. This is done by holding down the shift key and using the left mouse button. Single instance mode allows you to paint a single foliage instance where your cursor is located. Place in current level will place instances of the foliage in the current level. In the foliage settings, you'll have access to a bunch of different settings. We'll only discuss a couple in this tutorial. You have access to the density, just like we've already discussed. The scale X allows you to set a minimum and maximum size for the foliage. This means that each piece of foliage you paint will be slightly different. The random yaw means that our foliage has varied rotation. We can actually paint multiple assets at once. I'll add a grass clump to the mesh list. If I select the grass, I can change the parameters for the grass. I can now select both assets and paint on the landscape. Try using other assets and fill out your landscape. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video about getting started using landscapes in UE5, 
then you're probably interested in environment art or game development. So if you're interested in these topics, you may enjoy this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Have a good day.